Well, good to see you. We hope you had a good week. It was a fun week for us because we received several placemats from you guys. Right, and we want to share some terrific artwork with you guys. Look at this really cool message. Hope this brings you joy. Have an awesome day. Won't that brighten someone's life? Here's another one that has a uh, sort of a mountain scene with a really bright orange sky. And uh, God bless you with butterflies and hearts. And a really cheery, have a great day message with lots of decorations. And some happy spring. And another God bless you with butterflies and hearts. All right. Some people, the people, the seniors are really going to love their placemats that they get in a couple weeks. They are. And if some of you are still working your placemats, finish them up this week and mail them to us. And then we'll show them to you next week. Right. So, I think it might be time for Rover. Okay, let me go get him. Okay, uh, and I'll update the kids on the bean jar. All right. Here's our bean jar. If you can see, we're just below the fifth line. So, if you keep doing your lesson questions and posting on a discussion board, hopefully we'll be above that fifth line before the end of the year. Here comes Mrs. Wilmer and Rover. I better make room for them. Ah, uh, he was in the family room pacing around, waiting to share some jokes with us. Did I hear you say last week that you're talking about parables today? Ah, uh, yes we are. Do you know some parable jokes? Well, no, but, but didn't Jesus tell all the parable stories? Ah, uh, yes. You really know your Bible, Rover. So, how about some Jesus-themed jokes? Oh, <laughs> you got some Jesus-themed jokes? That sounds like a good idea. Okay. Who holds the high jump record in the Bible? I didn't know people were jumping in the Bible, but who holds the high jump record in the Bible? Jesus, because he cleared the temple. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when you clear something, it sounds like you jump over it. But really, when he cleared the temple, he was clearing out the money changers in front of the temple. All right, we have time for one more joke. Okay, good. Knock, knock. Who's there? Divine. Divine who? Jesus is divine and we are the branches. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> oh, Jesus meant. Uh, that's a play on words from when Jesus said, I'm the vine and you are the branches. Do you know what Jesus meant with that saying? Well, not really. I mean, I'm a dog, not a branch. Well, Jesus meant we are connected to him like the small branches are connected to the main vine. Remember when we were talking about symbolic language? So, symbolically, Jesus is like the main trunk, and we're the small branches, and Jesus keeps us spiritually alive through his grace. Kind of like the main vine keeps the small branches alive. Whoa, I'm glad to hear that. Well, thanks for spending time with us. It was fun. See you next week. Thanks, Rover, for getting us off to a good start again. You always do. And our opening prayer is coming up. And for our opening prayer this week, it will be a, a simile responsive prayer. A simile. Isn't that a figure of speech that directly compares two things? That's right. And for this prayer, we're going to have two parts. A leader part, which I'm going to read. And I, along with, with all of you at home, will play, pray the response part. And we always start our prayer with the sign of the cross. In the in name the of the Father, Father and, and the, the Son, and, and the, the Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. Amen. God is like a father. He watches over and loves me. Jesus is like a shepherd. He wants to protect me from harm. The Holy Spirit is like a close friend. She inspires me to make good choices. Heaven is like a wedding. Everyone there celebrates love. The kingdom of God is like a tiny mustard seed. It grows into a large community of people who take care of one another. I really like that prayer. It was comparing things, and it's it really leads into our lesson today about parables pretty well. Right, because parables talk about comparing two different things. Huh. So let's start. Let's talk about our parables now. All right. Parables was one of the main ways that Jesus taught his followers. So they were like teaching stories. And most parables have kind of four very similar characteristics. Okay. 
So we talked about comparing two different things in our poem. So parables compare two very different things. For example, one parable starts, the kingdom of heaven is like a person who planted good seed in his field. So it says one thing is like something else. Right. And parables use everyday events. In parables, there are characters, settings, and plots that come from everyday life. So Jesus' listeners, listeners would recognize them and sort of know what they're about going on. And most parables have a surprise part. And the surprise part, usually at the end, catches people off guard and makes them think about what the important lesson of the parable might be. And that brings us to the important lesson part. Each parable has an important lesson to, be, to teach the people. For example, one of the lessons is God is happy when a sinner repents. Huh. All right. So we're going to look at two parables today. They're both from the book of Luke. The first one is called the parable of the Good Samaritan. Oh, that's a great parable. But there's actually two people in that parable that, to Jesus' followers, they were very familiar with those two people. But for us, they're not really familiar people. So let's make sure everybody knows about them. The first is a Levite. Levite? I don't know what that is. So a Levite is someone who helped in the Jewish temple. For us today, it would be kind of like an altar server. Okay, well, I'm familiar with that. Right. And the other one that's going to show up in this story is there's a Samaritan in the story. And a Samaritan was a stranger from an unfriendly foreign country. Okay, well, I'm, I, I've am i met strangers before or seen them. So it would be a stranger from a foreign country that you don't know anything about. And here's the citation that we're going to uh, read from. We'd like you to look this up so you can read along with us. All right, I got my Bible here. And if you don't have your Bibles at home, go ahead and hit pause. Go get your Bible, and then come on back and start the video up again. Okay, LK is an abbreviation for Luke, Let's and you probably see. remember now that Luke is one of the four Gospels. So look for the four blue Gospel tabs at the beginning of the New Testament. All right. Find the tab for Luke, and open it to the beginning of Luke. That should be page 1494. So hopefully everybody's on page 1494. Hold on a second, I'm not there yet. All right, 1494. Okay, got it. Now turn the pages until you find chapter 10. Remember, you can be looking for the red chapter numbers, the large numbers in red, or at the top right and top left of each page, it tells you which chapter you're on. Let's see, here's chapter 8, uh, 9, 10 is on page 4. 1517. Right. And now we're looking for verse 29. Oh, 29. I've got to so, turn the page so, again for that. All right. And did you find 29? Yeah, 29. It's at the bottom of the page. So let me show you here. There it says, the parable of the Good Samaritan. And verse 29 is down here. Starts almost at the bottom. Okay. So follow along as we read from the Bible. You follow along with us. All right. So, uh, chapter 29. But the teacher of the law wanted to justify himself, so he asked Jesus, Who is my neighbor? Jesus answered, There was once a man who was going down to Jerusalem, from Jerusalem to Jericho, when robbers attacked him, stripped him, and beat him up, leaving him half dead. It so happened that a priest was going down that road, but when he saw the man, he walked on by the other side. In the same way, a Levite also came there, went over and looked at the man, and then walked on by the other side. But a Samaritan who was traveling that way came upon the man, and when he saw him, his heart was filled with pity. He went over to him, poured oil and wine on his wounds, and bandaged them. Then he put the man on his own animal and took him to an inn where they took care of him. The next day he took out two silver coins and gave them to the innkeeper. Take care of him, he told the innkeeper, and when I come back this way, I'll pay you for whatever else you spend on him. And Jesus concluded, In your opinion, which of these three acted like a neighbor toward the man attacked by the robbers? The teacher of the law answered, The one who was kind to him. And Jesus replied, You go then and do the same. Oh, I like that story. That's a good story. That's a great teaching story. So let's talk about how the four parts of a parable, what two things were being compared in this parable? Well, he was comparing a neighbor, like he said, who's, who's my neighbor? 
And it turned out that the stranger was actually the one who was acting like a neighbor. So he's comparing a neighbor and a stranger, which are two really different things. Right. And then in the story, there was an experience of somebody needing um, help. Is that something we can all sort of identify with? Yes, I actually needed help the other day picking something up that was heavy, and you helped me with that. That's right. So we all are used to somebody needing help. But something surprising happened in this story. You, what was it? You know, what was surprising is the priest, and we know what a priest is. We're familiar with that. And the Levite, who's like an altar server. So you'd think those would be like the good people. They didn't help the man who'd been beaten up. But the stranger, the Samaritan, did help him. So that was kind of surprising. Right. And what do you think the important lesson is that Jesus wants us to learn? Um, that the stranger is your neighbor. That you should treat the stranger as your neighbor. And the stranger is your neighbor. Right. That's a great lesson to learn. Uh, we have time for one more parable. Good. And so this one, I think, is going to be the parable of the lost sheep. And it comes from Luke as well at the 15th chapter. Uh, this time, you just at home, you just listen to the parable being told as a story. After all, that's the way Jesus' people heard it. They weren't reading the parables. They were listening to Jesus as he taught the parables, as he just told the story. Okay, I'm in uh, Luke chapter 15, verse 4, starting. Suppose one of you has a hundred sheep and loses one of them. What do you do? You leave the other 99 sheep in the pasture and go looking for the one that got lost until you find it. When you find it, you are so happy that you put it on your shoulders and carry it back home. Then you call your friends and neighbors together and say to them, I am so happy I found my lost sheep. Let us celebrate. In the same way, I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 respectful people who do not need to repent. Huh. All right. Well, that was an interesting parable. So let's talk about our four things that are in most parables. They compare two things that are different. So what's being compared in this parable? Well, he starts off talking about a sheep that's lost, but then at the end, he kind of talks about sinners that repent. And so I think the sheep is like a sinner. Okay. He's comparing a sheep to a sinner. Those, are, those two. are two pretty different things. Yeah. Okay. And in the story, he lost something and then he went off to find it and he actually did find it. Is that something that everyday people happens in everyday life? Absolutely. I lose <laughs> things all the time. But I'm, I find them. Most of the times I find them, but not always. <laughs> all right. Know. But now what was the surprising thing that happened? Well, the surprising thing to me is if I was a shepherd and one of my sheep was lost, I wouldn't leave the other 99 all by themselves in the pasture with no one to protect them. I might come back and they've wandered off. It seems like a really strange thing for a shepherd to Right, do. so that's surprising, but that's what, and what leads us to the important lesson. So what do you think the important lesson is? Well, the important lesson, Jesus is, gives us a lot of help in this one. He says the lesson is, that God is going to repent over a. No, going to be. Uh, he's going to be. God is going to be excited and overjoyed about a sinner who repents, just like that shepherd was so excited to find that one lost sheep. So that's the important lesson that God is very happy when a sinner repents. Well, I'm glad to know that. Yeah, it makes me think how important the sacra sacrament of reconciliation really is. Right. Uh, and those were two really nice parables. I really like those stories. Now, if we want to read more, is there any way for us to find where the parables are? Because a lot of the Bible is kind of not that interesting, but the parables are really cool. Right. In the back of your Bible, in the back there's a page that says, it's an index of Bible stories. Let's see, it's on page 1860. And if you turn the third page in that index has the parables of Jesus. And then it lists them all here alphabetically and tells where you can find them in the Gospels. And that's on page 1862. And when you look through there, you're going to find out that Luke has the most parables of any of the four Gospels. Right. He was, was the, the... He wrote the most. <laughs> yeah, yes. Right. 
Okay, well, we enjoyed spending time with you today. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to complete your lesson questions and to post on the discussion board. Yeah, I can't wait to learn about everybody's virtual school experience. Yeah, we even had a virtual well, Spark experience here that, this that's year. Right. So we'll see you next week for a lesson on the Holy Spirit. Ooh, I'm looking forward to that because from what I remember, it includes playing with a balloon. It does. We will be playing with balloons next week, so be sure to come back. Um, and then what's this week's question? We always the, answer the question the at the question end. The question is, what is a parable? Oh, well, we learned about that. A parable. We learned that a parable is a teaching story that Jesus used. Okay, and it has four parts. It compares two different things. Uses everyday experiences. Has a surprise part. And teaches an important lesson. All right. We'll see you next week. Have a good week. And God, God bless, bless you. you.